Today, we're going to be learning how we can create a basic signup screen using Flat and Python. And it's going to look like this. So the user is going to be able to sign up using their username and password, and then they have to agree to some stuff before they can actually sign up. As you can see, the sign up button is disabled. But as soon as we add a username and some password, and then we agree to this stuff, we can finally sign up. If we were to remove any one of these fields, it would consider our form to be incomplete. So the sign up button will disable itself until the user decides to actually fill out the information. So with all the three fields filled out, we can actually tap on sign up and it will take us to this intro screen where it says welcome username. So that's the application that we will be building in this tutorial. Now the very first thing we need to do is create a new empty Python project. And you need to make sure you actually have flat installed. And if you don't, you can just go to the terminal and type in pip install flat. And that's going to install everything that you need to actually use flat in your Python project. And with that being done, we can now take care of the imports. So first I'm going to import flat as FT. Then I'm going to import from flat the text field, the checkbox, an elevated button, the text, the row and a column. And finally, I'm going to import from flat underscore core dot control event, the control event. So those are the imports that I'm going to be using. Now this project is not going to be using any architectures just yet. And we're going to explore that later on as we learn more about flat. But for now, we're still going to create a single component or a single entry point to our program. And all of this is going to be done through main. So here we have a function called main, which will take a page of type flat.page. And I'll annotate this that it returns none because we are only running this function. Now let's take care of the basic setup, such as the page.title, which will just be sign up. Then we have the page.vertical alignment, which I will set to ft.mainaxis alignment, and I want everything to be centered. And with the page.theme mode, I'm going to set that to the theme mode of light. I want this to be in light mode. Otherwise, it's going to default to whatever your system setting is. Next, we can change the width of the window by referring to the window width. And I want that to be set to 400. And the height will also be set to 400. And I do not want the users to be able to resize this. So window resizable is going to be set to false. And that will take care of the basic setup of the window. Next, we want to set up our fields. And this is where we will create the text field, the checkbox and the elevated button. So first we want to create some text fields. And the first one will be the text username, which will be of type text field. And that's going to equal a text field with the following arguments. The first one being a label that will be set to username. Then we have the text align and we want the text to be aligned to the left. So ft text align dot left. And the width is going to be set to 200. And for the password, it's quite simple. We're just going to duplicate this, change the username to password. And this we need to change to password as well. Except there is one thing we do need to change because we don't want anyone to see that we're typing a password. So we're going to set the password parameter to true. And that's just going to convert the text to bullet points. Then we want to create a checkbox, which will be called checkbox sign up of type checkbox. And that will equal a checkbox with the label set to I agree to stuff. And the initial value will be set to false. And finally, we just need that submit button. So here I'll create something called button submit, which will be of type elevated button. And that's going to equal an elevated button with the text set to sign up. The width will be set to 200 and disabled will be set to true by default. Great. So now we have the visual aspect of our program taken care of, but we still need to define some functionality. Like how do we check that all the fields are filled out before we enable the submit button? So to take care of these events, we're going to create a couple of functions. 
The first one is going to be called validate. And I'll make some space. And inside validate, we're going to specify the only parameter to be a control event. And this doesn't return anything, so we will return none. And then we can actually perform the logic, which is the check. So I want to check that all the fields are actually filled and that the checkbox signup is set to true. So the easiest way I found to do this was to check if all and pass in the text underscore username dot value, the text underscore password dot value, and the checkbox signup dot value. So if all of these contain values or if this value is set to true, it's going to consider that everything is filled out, which means we can enable the submit button. And to do that, we'll type in button underscore submit dot disabled is going to be set to false. Else button underscore submit disabled is going to be set to true. And sure, you can make this a one liner. I just don't want the text to go outside of the screen. So I'm going to leave it as is. And something super important that I always forget about is to update the page. So every time you do something that kind of affects the UI, you're going to have to call update. Otherwise, you won't see those changes on your screen. But next, we're going to create a function called submit. And it's still going to take a control event, and this will return none. And the first thing I want to do is log the username. And I recommend you use the logging module for serious logging, but using print for a tutorial is perfectly fine. So here we'll type in username and text underscore username dot value. And we're going to do the same thing for the password. So password and text underscore password. Then if you want to remove everything from your screen, you're going to have to call page.clean, which will just remove everything that's currently in the window. And then we can create our login screen because once we have everything validated, we're going to want to take the user to a new screen as soon as they tap on the submit button. So page.clean and page.add. So we can add a new page. And inside here, we're going to create a row. And as the controls, we're going to specify some text with the value set to welcome text username value. And I want the size of this to be set to 20. And since we want this to be aligned perfectly in the center, we're going to specify the alignment to be set to flat main axis alignment dot center. And that will take care of the functionality needed to create this login screen. But we still need to link the functionality to the actual fields. So to do this, I'm going to refer first to the checkbox underscore sign up button and refer to on change, where we can actually insert the functionality that we want to use as soon as the user interacts with that field. And for here, we need to insert the validate function without the parentheses, because we're not calling it, we're just linking it. And the same thing is going to happen for the username. Every time we change it, we're going to just call validate and also for the password. So text underscore password. And then for the button underscore submit, we want to provide an on click method, which will be set to the submit functionality. Finally, the last thing to do is to actually render our main page. All we did until now is create the functionality and the actual fields, but we still need to position them in our page. So to do so, I'll type in page.add and the first element will be a row that will take some controls. And the first control is going to be a column. And with this, we can center everything quite nicely in the center of the screen. Then we have to open that up as well. And we can comfortably place in our elements in a column, such as the text username, and then the text password, and then the checkbox sign up, and finally the button submit. So it was done in order, in the same order that you would see it on the screen. And for the row, as always, we're going to specify the alignment to be set to FT main axis alignment dot center. And that will take care of the main function. All that's left to do now is to actually run it. So let's test it out by creating our if name is equal to main check and running the FT app with the target set to main. And if we run this, we're going to get this sign up screen. And we can test it out by typing in some random username with some random password and that we agree to stuff. 
and you'll see that the sign up box or the sign up button will become enabled, which means we can actually tap on sign up and it will welcome us evasdkfvadfks to this new app. That's a sick username, by the way. And if we go back to our script, you'll also see the log message. But let's run it one more time because there's still other functionality we need to test for, such as what if we only enter a password and what if we agree to stuff, but we don't provide a username. Well, as you can see, the sign up button will not work. And if we say the username is hello and we remove the password, that won't work either, which means our program is working just as expected. So let's insert our password and let's sign up once again. And it's going to clean that page and then provide us with a new screen which is our welcome page. And we can go back to our program and we can see the log message for that. So that concludes our second app made in Flat. There's still a lot for us to improve on because at the moment, none of this is reusable. We created an app, but it's all stuck in a single function, which means we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. We can't reuse any of these components just yet, but we still learned a lot about how they work. So as we learn how to use Flat together, we're going to learn more and more about how to make it as reusable as possible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if there's anything I could have improved on in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.